Acts chapter 25. Now three days after Festus had arrived in the province, he went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea. And the chief priests and the principal men of the Jews laid out their case against Paul, and they urged him, asking as a favor against Paul, that he summon him to Jerusalem, because they were planning an ambush to kill him on the way. Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea, and that he himself intended to go there shortly. So, said he, let the men of authority among you go down with me, and if there is anything wrong about the man, let them bring charges against him. And so Paul is currently in Caesarea. He is in the middle of a court case that has been going on for two years now. It started off under Governor Felix. Now it's being continued under the new governor, Festus. Festus has gone to Jerusalem, and all the chief priests and the Jews are asking him for a favor to bring Paul to Jerusalem that he might face trial there, but actually they intend to kill him on the way. And Festus is not going to give them what they want so easily. I suspect that Paul is of some value to Festus because the reality is Paul was not guilty. He was totally innocent and Festus knew it. Felix even knew it. But Felix used him to gain favor with the Jews. And now Festus was most likely using Paul also to gain favor with the Jews and possibly for some kind of monetary gain. Felix wanted a bribe from Paul in order to secure his freedom. And so perhaps Festus wants the same. We're not sure. But when Festus could have released him, he actually kept him in prison and facing trial. And so he says to these chief priests and elders, Paul is going to be tried in Caesarea. And if you want to bring any charges against him, you're going to have to come there and present them before me there. Verse 6. After he stayed among them not more than eight or ten days, he went down to Caesarea. And the next day he took his seat on the tribunal and ordered Paul to be brought. When he had arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing many and serious charges against him that they could not prove. Paul argued in his defense, Neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I committed any offense. And so it was easy for Paul to argue his defense because he hadn't committed any of the crimes he was being accused of. They were false accusations, and it says that the Jews could not present any proofs. So again, the book of Acts written by Luke is not only an accurate account of the early church and the life of Paul, but it's also a very detailed account of Paul's innocence. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried on these charges before me? And so Festus is trying to gain favor with the Jews. It looks good for a governor to have the Jewish population under control and obeying and not rioting, not revolting, but actually submitting to the government and getting along and living in harmony with the occupying force of Rome. And so if a governor can on occasions give the Jewish leaders what they want, Hopefully it will appease them and cause them to comply with the government. And so here Festus is actually using Paul for political gain. So that Caesar will see that Festus is doing a great job governing these provinces and keeping the Jews under control. And so he asked Paul if he would like to go to Jerusalem to be trialed. Now obviously Paul doesn't want to go to Jerusalem to be trialed because he knows the Jews will just take him and kill him there. And also, he knows it's God's will for him to take the gospel to Caesar and to Rome. And so really, Governor Festus should just release Paul because he's innocent. And there's no proof that can back up the charges against him. But Paul is actually wanting to go to Rome to take the gospel to Caesar. Verse 10, But Paul said, I am standing before Caesar's tribunal where I ought to be tried. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer and have committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not seek to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with his counsel, answered, To Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. And so Paul used his rights as a Roman citizen to appeal to Caesar. And Festus couldn't deny him that. 
But Festus has got a little bit of a problem because how can he send them to Caesar when there are no actual proper charges against him and there's no proof to support those charges? Verse 13. Now when some days had passed, Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. So this is King Agrippa II and Bernice is his wife. It's actually his sister that he married and they are ruling together. They arrive in Caesarea and they meet with Governor Festus. Verse 14, And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix. And when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So when they came together here, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in his case of such evils as I supposed. Rather, they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you will hear him. And so why didn't Governor Festus just release Paul? He's innocent. Well, I personally believe he is still playing a political game and he's trying to see what he can get out of Paul. Paul is a very prominent key figure, quite famous. There's a lot of people who hate him and he's causing a lot of upset, not just in Jerusalem, but around the world. And so if Festus can take credit for dealing with effectively with Paul, then he's going to look good. It's going to either win him favor with Caesar or he could win favor with the Jews. And so he's trying to play his cards right, but he also has to have some kind of justification for why he's sending him off to Caesar and not just setting him free. Like why bother Caesar with someone who is just innocent? And so here he's enlisting the support of King Agrippa, who is going to see him the next day. Verse 23 so on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in and Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish people petitioned me, both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death. And as he himself appealed to the emperor, I decided to go ahead and send him. But I have nothing definite to write to my Lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to indicate the charges against him. So here you can see Governor Festus, he is wanting to send Paul to Caesar because that could very much come back to him favorably. But he's playing a risky game here because if he sends him for no reason, he's going to look incompetent and someone who is just binding Roman citizens for no cause, which the Roman government looks down upon. And so he's clearing his name here in front of the audience of the king and all the dignitaries. And he's saying, I don't see anything wrong that Paul has done that is deserving death. However, he himself has appealed to Caesar. And so because he has appealed to Caesar, I would like to send him to Caesar. But I've got nothing to write to Caesar. And it's not my fault. I've got nothing to write to Caesar. Because it's the Jews who are accusing him, but they cannot support their accusations. And so I've got nothing to write. And so I'm hoping that today in your audience, You'll be able to examine him and therefore give me something to write. You tell me what I should write to Caesar. And so you can see that Festus is a spineless person who is playing a political game. He's trying to cover every angle where he could look like a fool and incompetent. And hopefully in this whole situation, he can come out ahead 
and hopefully grow in favor with Caesar and become the guy who dealt with this terrible person, Paul, who has caused great upset in the Roman Empire. And so now he's trying to get King Agrippa to back him up. And so here Paul, like Jesus said, finds himself about to preach the gospel before a king.